Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Leadership Void Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Vince, to bring you the best in our veteran military spouse and first responder community. And Vince will introduce today's guest. Absolutely. Thanks, Enrique. Again, happy May, everyone. We are here again during the Mental Health Awareness Month, introducing and having you meet some great individuals. Today, we have Dr. Cordalis Salomon, a licensed mental health counselor from the greater Orlando area. Dr. Cordalis, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Hello. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm super excited to be here. Oh, what can I tell you about myself? So I do have my private practice here in Orlando, Florida, and uh, I am um, fully virtual. Telehealth uh, therapy is what I offer as a licensed uh, therapist and also a national uh, certified uh, therapist as well. And uh, a lot of the work that I do via couples or individuals is um, trauma-based. And my research area is through uh, emotional resilience and how to use self-compassion um, to provide that emotional resilience. The other uh, aspect of my professional uh, experience really comes from being a professor too. I am an assistant professor for William and Mary. And there uh, we have the graduate program that serves students in the mental health counseling online program. And also we have a veteran and military uh, counseling track as well, which I'm in charge of the military track where I advise the students. That is wonderful. And I, have to, I, I love when you can take a profession, give back to the education side and, and thank you for your work with William and Mary. Uh, but more importantly, with the military community. So we thank you for that. Uh, so tell us about your practice. Sure. Well, gosh, I've been practicing now for almost 10 years. And, uh, you know, COVID gave me the gift of being able to go from uh, face to face to transition into being uh, virtual uh, so all the work that i do via telehealth uh, i get to see people from all central florida uh, so that's how my practice work and and like i said i work with couples I, I do work with a lot of members of the military too because of my experience uh, with them and do a lot of work with trauma. Uh, I am certified as an EMDR. I don't know if you're familiar with what EMDR stands for, but it's a way of helping individuals with trauma reprocess those experiences uh, so they're not longer triggered by them. Uh, it's, and it's extremely effective uh, the way how we have helped a lot of individuals uh, through that practice. Well, you know, interesting, you said during the pandemic, you said it was a gift to give you the opportunity to work uh, virtually. So great words and great reframing and using that opportunity. So how did the pandemic really either influence or impacted uh, those that need mental health? Yeah, that, that's, that's a good question, because let me tell you, it, it was a especially for therapists, we were overwhelmed with calls at the beginning. Um, and, and, and there was just not enough. There was not enough. There were not enough out of us. Uh, also, trans, having to all of us transition into telehealth, uh, even though that created a, a, a stage of adjustment for some of us that were not used or comfortable to telehealth, it, it really brought so much many more opportunities for those that were not able to drive, did not have the transportation or the means or or even the mental health issues that they were not comfortable to go out there uh, to see a therapist. So we have so much uh, further reach into it. And other thing that we noticed that has exploded since the pandemic from the academic as being a professor is uh, the mental health online counseling programs where students now are feeling more com comfortable be able to participate in online uh, graduate program rather than face to face. There used to be a, a lot more of a stigma of having to be an online program rep reputation wise versus being on a face to face. And I have to say, especially in the program where I come from with William and Mary, I mean, this is an Ivy League university that's offering a full online graduate program. And right now it's the most successful program of the entire College of Education department in that, that university. So that tells you something uh, on how, how we can be, keep the same rigorous 
uh, program for the students, even though it's online and still be incredibly successful. Yeah, and I, I love that uh, you were able to overcome the obstacles, not only you, but the establishments that you are part of. Uh, and and undoubtedly, we had to, right? We had to overcome those things that we were going to be. All right, so um, part of adapting and and going forward is uh, knowing how you're going to face the future. Now, our future is still not clear, right? The last two and a half years have been a little uh, muddy. We're trying to make ends meet and things happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And so what does the horizon look like for those uh, in the mental health community and how they supply uh, that service? Yeah. So, you know, one thing that mental health counselors are getting really excited about is this new, uh, it's called the Counseling Compact Initiative. And, and this is probably the, the biggest thing happening for us, uh, very close into the future. And this, the Counseling uh, Compact is an interstate compact or a contract among states. And that's what will allow professionals, counselors licensed and residing in a compact, as a compact member state uh, to practice in other uh, states without need for multiple licenses. And, and the benefits uh, to that are not just for therapists. I mean, of course, we're going to have that ability to have license portability and be able to, to practice in other states without going through a long process of getting licensed and qualify. But think about the benefit to the clients as well. How many clients, especially now, uh, are being more mobile and willing to move because they're working remote? And they're going through these transitions of adjustment into a, a new state. They don't want to have to start all over again with the therapists as well. Uh, think of uh, military spouses that are constantly relocating. Why do they have to start all over again building a rapport and trust? I mean, we work in relationships. It's very difficult for clients to start all over again and find the right fit with a therapist. So just imagine removing that barrier through the counseling compact. And for this to be effective, we're gonna need at least 10 states uh, to already uh, get it approved. And the good news is that we just, I think now we have 11 states. So very soon uh, among this, amongst these 10 states, we're gonna be able to practice that license portability. That is amazing. I definitely uh, know as a military family and probably Enrique as well, and all our troops, definitely needed something like that 10, 20, 30 years ago. But the fact that you can definitely expand your landscape and help those and build, continue that relationship, the continuity of care is and very important. So I love the, that what's on the horizon in the mental health arena, not only for the therapists, but for those recipients of the clients as well. So thank you for that uh, offer. And I'm excited to hear that's going on. Um, let's transition a little bit and talk about military. Uh, Dr. Corrales, what do you do uh, in your spare time that aids you to sharpen your soul in your professional life? Let me give you a controversial response. I do absolutely nothing. And you're going to be like, what, what do you mean by nothing? I'm actually reading this book right now by uh, Celeste Headley. And it's, the title of the book is Do Nothing. And basically, we need to do so much more. We're becoming an ad we're so addicted to efficiency that that productivity is killing us. So during uh, the time that I'm not being a professional, I really strive to quiet that inner voice that we all carry. We call it the roommate that lives with us. Uh, that's constantly making us worry or stress or think about what I need to do next. Uh, so during my, during my free time, the research is showing that if we learn to sit still, Never mind if you have to be specific about a particular meditation, just simply be still. That's when we're gonna be the most creative. That's when our ideas will flourish. The moment that that voice finally takes a rest and is quiet. So, so I find that when I take those pauses and those moments uh, during my spare time, that I can bring th that creativity into my professional life. So I'm very intentional setting those boundaries that during my free time is my free time and that is not going to collide well with professional life. And most of the time we're uh, opposed to just stay and still, but I'm a proponent for not doing and just be, right? Just be. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of so people much. that do not uh, take the time to to just do that. 
just relax, you know, be still and be. And I, I, so I love that uh, aspect of, of your professional life. Uh, most people are just busy going around doing stuff. Um, and we all know that business, business does not equal productivity. So, um, so as you was growing in your professional life, uh, your educational life background, you must have had some advice from either a teacher or a mentor or a coach that you said, you know, that's something that I would love to share in the future or as you've been uh, in the professor mode or helping others and are sharing this, what advice would that be? You know, when it comes to leadership, right? Um, I there, There's one quote or a statement that really resonates with me and I try to apply that wherever I go. And that is to always choose courage over comfort. Um, we usually come with this armor, right? And, and, and that makes it so difficult to show the human side and the authentic self. And as, as leaders, we have to role model that in order for others to, to also lower that barrier. And that is so difficult, right? Um, but I have to tell you, being vulnerable as a leader, some people will say, well, that's really trending now but it really goes so much further for you, for, for those that work under you to be able to trust you and to be able to then address these difficult conversations that otherwise will spread like a bacteria to a place of non-productivity if we're not uh, facing them and, and challenging them uh, at the beginning, not at the end. Definitely choose courage over comfort. It's great mm -hmm. advice for everyone because being your true authentic self as a leader, being vulnerable is definitely great action steps to build that rapport, build that trust and empower them because we're just human beings as well, right? So that's, exactly. and, and another C, not ch ch challenge or courage. Uh, let's talk about challenge. Uh, how do you handle the challenges uh, you currently face or have faced in the past? Yeah, so you know, <laughs> there's a quote out there that says, hell is other people, right? <laughs> so, you know, the, interacting with others and then ego getting in the way that's always going to be an issue and in organizations and leadership and interactions with human beings in general one thing that's really important uh, when facing a challenge is always assume positive intention if, if there is a, a tension with other individuals using it as an example um, so here is my rule i first make sure i don't take anything personal right? Uh, then I approach with curiosity. And finally, from what I learned from that inquiry of being curious, then I can approach with compassion and empathy. And, and that takes me so much further if I can quiet down that voice that starts creating the story of, of, of how this challenge and the fear that might come from that challenge. But the other part of how I handle any challenge in my life, whether it's professional or personal, is checking in with my self-compassion and uh, I'm being too hard on myself through this process. If this is a moment of suffering or a high epic moment of failure in my life, what am I doing to take care of myself? Am, am I isolating versus realizing that I'm human? Am I over experiencing emotions based on the fear of the future rather than being in the moment? Of course, I'm a counselor, so I, I tend to go there, uh, but you'll be surprised how self-compassion is always placed in the back burner uh, as a misunderstanding from society that then we're just giving ourselves permission in the moment of a challenge or a mistake, but it's quite the opposite. This is when you become the strongest by taking care of yourself first. Well, well giving grace is wonderful and applying self-grace is critical. Uh, especially in a world that demands so much from us on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we can't do that, then I don't know how we'll survive, right? Because uh, we will experience challenges and we will experience times of change. Now, times of change can bring about a lot of feelings of stress, anxiety, and uh, doubt. Uh, so yeah. how do you strategize around uh, times of change? Oh, well, 
when we're dealing with change, uh, whether it's through an organization, in, in my academic world, that's when we face a lot of changes, is we have to look back uh, and, and just um, see where in my head as a leader here, is there enough trust? Do we have enough trust in, in the leader, in the members of the organization, so then they, we can face those changes? Uh, one thing that we have been talking lately a lot in my team, um, in academia as, as faculty is, are we being intentional on building enough community among each other? So when those changes happen and, and, and we feel uncomfortable, do we trust each other to be able to go there and talk about it? And, and, and the thing with community in, in any professional organization is it has to go beyond just talking about work. It has to go about trusting the human person that works right next to you and checking in with them in certain aspects that they're going through in their own personal life and making sure that you're aware, that you care, that you show up, because that's what we're going to need if we have to present a change that people might not like. There's going to be some resistance, but are we going to trust each other to go through those uh, bumps until we get there together? You know, very good advice. And I love that reframing because building your community within your own organization is pivotal to build trust and to help with the, uh, be more strategic with that change that will come upon us because change is inevitable, but growth is optional. So a uh, great advice, great strategies and folks listening to this show, how do they get a hold of you, Dr. Cordali Solomon, or your practice or academia? What do they need to do? Sure, absolutely. If you want to learn more about what I do in my private practice, you could uh, head on to uh, selfcompassionlife.com and uh, reach me through there. Uh, you can also um, reach me through my email, drcoralisolomon at gmail.com. Absolutely. And we'll have folks, we'll have that as part of the show notes and the video so that you can get a hold of Dr. Solomon. Uh, thank you, Corales, for being with us today, sharing not only the great work you do in academia uh, and in the mental health community, uh, but what you're doing for military. We really appreciate uh, your work with the veteran community, the military spouse community, uh, and uh, at being part of the first responder community. We thank you as well for that. Absolutely. It's a pleasure and honor. Thank you so much for having me. And also want to let everybody know that you can reach us at theleadershipvoid at gmail.com. If you have any questions, want to curate any guests or any, any opportunities that we want to present to you, come by us at theleadershipvoid at gmail.com. We do a couple of things. We have an opportunity for you to help us out. And what I mean by that is go ahead and hit our uh, YouTube channel, The Leadership Void. Hit subscribe, hit like, and you're going to enter to do, into a drawing to win this wonderful book, Standing Old by Scott McGregor, The Salute Edition. It is autographed, people. We are just needing 10 more folks, or maybe nine at this time. So please help us out there. Uh, talk about help out what we do and offer the community every 1st and the 15th at 1900, which is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. It's called Radio Check. Opportunity for our first responders, our military community to come together and just chat uh exchange of resources just exchange uh exchange smiles to one another so check us out every first and the 15th radio check linkedin live uh these uh these episodes and other are possible from the home team of Ron Point Mortgage Servicing Corporation. We thank them for being our sponsor and continue on with these wonderful guests. But today is all about Dr. Solomon. Thank you, Godalis, again, and have a great day. Thank you.